You know what they say about bringing a knife to a gunfight. That applies to swords too. But what about bringing a sword and a gun to a sword fight? By the way, apologies if I end up sweating like a Star Wars nerd ogling slave Leia cosplayers at Comic-Con. It's been disgustingly humid lately and the video room is miserable right now. I can't even take off my shirt because this is where the mic likes to be. That's where it works best. Something fantasy writers and artists seem to be particularly fond of, aside from the scantily clad female form, is the idea of using more than one weapon at once. Whether it be dual wielding swords, or sword and axe, or morning star and axe, or dual pistols, dual crossbows, have fun reloading that. It tickles people with the rule of cool. However, combining a firearm with a blade or some other melee weapon is not only reasonable and practical, it was also done in history. They don't have any handguns to demonstrate with at the moment. However, this particular combination, shotgun and sword, is seen in today's sponsor, Dungeon Fighter Online. If the old hack and slash is too low tech for you, you can also blast them with pistols, SMGs, rifles, and other firearms. Or if you're thinking both is good, Sword and firearm. Now that's a proper edgelord right here. Especially this guy. Sword and shotgun and explosives. Dungeon Fighter Online or DFO is a 2D MMORPG beat-em-up, that's a mouthful, with a retro style that is free to play on PC, where you run through dungeons in various landscapes, fighting hordes of enemies with combos and special attacks while snatching up loot, of course. There are over 60 class advancements, so you can really hone in on your preferred playstyle and also customize your character with equipment and cosmetic items. Dungeons come in solo and group variety, and there are raid dungeons for added challenge, if you want a different challenge, you can do PvP as well. The Muse and Traveler update adds the Archer class, which has two advancements. And between July 25th and September 19th, there are special events that provide faster level ups and faster rewards to kick your character into high gear. And there's a coupon event for additional rewards. So there's a lot going on and I appreciate the support. Check out the link in the description below and give DFO a try. Because I'm not a fantasy action hero, I find casually slinging a full-size double-barrel shotgun in my offhand rather cumbersome. I'm just gonna go with this crossbow here, which is not actually a pistol crossbow, but it's small enough that we can pretend and imagine this was uh, light and compact enough to actually use with one hand. Like I hinted at before, the problem with using a crossbow in your offhand would be uh, how on earth are you gonna reload that? But that was also an issue historically, because um, how are you gonna reload a single shot muzzle-loading pistol while holding on to the other weapon while in combat? It's not really happening. Not that you could easily reload a modern magazine-fed pistol with one hand either, but perhaps you could come up with some kind of rig that places the magazines in such a way that you just gotta slam the pistol down and press the slide release. Now what was called handgun already existed in the Middle Ages, which was basically a miniaturized cannon barrel affixed to the end of a pole, which you absolutely needed two hands to operate because you needed to ignite it with a burning match. Not at all like a pistol. Pistols did become very useful in the early 16th century with the invention of the wheel lock, which used pyrite to ignite the power charge. There's a neat animation that explains how it works, which I'm gonna link in the description down below. The wheel lock enabled full one-handed operation, which now made it useful on horseback. And in fact, there's an interesting cavalry tactic called the caracol. There's a video explaining it, which I'm also going to link in the description below. Check it out. The wheel lock had its downsides. It was expensive to make and it was a complicated mechanism. The more complex something is, the more likely it is to fail. And also it required spanning with a key that you could lose and thereby render the entire thing useless. It was replaced by the flint lock, which in turn was eventually replaced by the percussion lock. Both I've covered in videos before. I'll link them down below if you're interested. So what's the deal with using a ranged weapon in one hand and a melee weapon in the other? Wouldn't it be more purposeful to focus on the use of one at a time? Yes, but there are some benefits for sure. One is pointed out by Lieutenant William Pringle Green in 1812. What he points out is that during the boarding of a ship, it was common to start with the pistol, fire it, discard it, and draw your sword from the hip, which, 
is all fine and good, but it takes longer and you can be caught off guard. What he suggests instead is engaging with the saber in hand and the pistol already drawn and then firing when you're close to the enemy, which makes a lot of sense because you, in a lot of cases, in those sorts of engagements, you're not really going to take the time to aim down the sights. In fact, a lot of firearms in history did not have sights or rudimentary ones. Instead, you would just naturally point and shoot, which also means that you wouldn't have to spend as much time to develop marksmanship skills in your offhand, which is more difficult than with the main hand. So you would simply walk up to someone and either while you're already fighting with the saber, you might suddenly raise the pistol and point at them and shoot at them from a meter away. Or you could attempt a shot from a further distance and then rush in right after to fight with the saber while still holding onto the pistol. I made a video about using an empty gun against a sword and what options you potentially have. It's a huge disadvantage. That was my takeaway, but I was focusing mainly on modern pistol designs. Earlier in history, pistols were larger and differently shaped with a shallower grip angle, which allows you to do something very interesting that William Pringle Green describes, which is to use the pistol in your offhand sort of like an improvised tonfa by gripping it in reverse and aligning the barrel with your forearm. So now you're able to basically catch an opponent's attacks, block them on your reinforced forearm. That's a fascinating tactic I've never considered before. Also, if you think about the existence of Qatars made with a barrel on either side, so you still have the bars running along your forearm, you can use it to thrust with up close and you can still fire it. That would be extremely useful. Or for a fantasy character, you could even imagine a modified pata with a gun at the end, with or without blade. And of course also, if you use a bayonet on a pistol, that could also be quite useful in uh, melee combat. While again, you still have the saber or sword. Some people like to make this distinction. Oh, it's not a sword, it's a saber. Actually, every saber is a sword. It's just that not every sword is a saber. Anyway, so you could definitely think of a number of scenarios and tactics where this makes perfect sense. There's some really interesting gun blades basically in real life. I've made a video about that too, also linked below. Melee weapons have been combined with firearms in different ways. It can either be primarily a firearm that has a blade attached to it, whether removable or not, or it can be a sword or dagger or other melee weapon that also has a barrel with some kind of trigger mechanism attached to it. So um, there's plenty to play around with, so to speak, if you're looking for ideas for a fantasy setting. They even sometimes combine a ranged weapon with another ranged weapon. This is a gun crossbow combination. Wild, huh? I found a video of sparring with sword and pistol, which is such a fun idea. I would definitely recommend watching that. And you can see some of the different dynamics. With a single shot pistol, it's uh, quite a significant uh, tactical choice when you're gonna fire it. Because as I said, you only have one shot and reloading takes way too long to do it in the middle of a fight. You can't even run away while reloading. It's just, it's not really happening. It's too finicky. Not even with a revolver would that be feasible, but at least then you get five or six shots instead of one. So now it matters how much you trust your aim and uh, how much of a risk you want to take. So if you can aim and, and fire and shoot them before you even enter a uh, sword range, great, <laughs> problem solved. But if you miss and the, uh, the other person also has a sword and a pistol, now you're in a really rough spot because they still have the chance to pop off that shot at a closer range with a higher chance of hitting you. Unless they're an XCOM operative, I suppose, where standing like this means there's still a chance to miss. And in fact, the common saber stance is with one hand on the back. So you could even hide the pistol behind your back and suddenly go bang. So this is one of those cases where a fantasy trope is not silly at all, 
but rather realistic and makes perfect sense, was done this way and could be plausibly done in different scenarios, even in the real world. So I uh, hope you found this interesting, entertaining. Thanks for watching and stay safe, folks. Oh, it is so hot in here. Gross.